question um, I'd like to ask you, uh, and again, this goes to the book, and this is actually a quote that's taken from the book. It says, the Sarajevo Haganah has survived the same human disaster over and over again. You've got a society where people tolerate difference, like Spain, during this time period, and everything is humming along. Everything's creative and prosperous, and then somehow this fear, this hate, this need to demonize the other, it just rises up and smashes the whole society. And then we have Inquisition and Nazis and extremist Serb nationalists, same old, same old. It seems to me that the book at this point bears witness to all of that. And so I'd ask you, do you currently see our society or world in a period of tolerance or intolerance? Is that an easy question or a hard question? Both. <laughs> Both. I agree that it is both, and I it just I want to give an example uh, from my time as a Peace Corps volunteer uh, in terms of tolerance and understanding and how when you uh, put yourself in a situation where you are the minority, uh, most Peace Corps volunteers go into a village uh, where they are by themselves and they have to introduce themselves to a different culture, a different religion, a different system of life in general, and a very famous Peace Corps story is about a volunteer who was in Africa and was placed into a community, and he really wanted to make a difference and work with the people. And he noticed that the women were every morning getting up very early and walking to the well that was three miles away uh, to go get water. There was no well in the village. And so uh, they thought it was interesting that, he thought it was interesting that none of the men in the village were helping them and they would walk every day three miles one way and three miles back to go get this water which they needed for their work every day. And so the volunteer said, well, why, why don't I raise the money to build a well in the middle of the village? Because that will be easier for these people. So he raised the funds and they put in a well and it was great and the women used it for about a month and then they started going back to the original well and they would continue to walk the three miles. And he thought, well, what did I do wrong? I made this well and I spent thousands of dollars I raised in America to bring this well to the community and they're not using it. Well, he forgot to ask the people why they were walking the three miles. What was their, their traditions? What was their culture? Why were they doing that? These women were working long hours in a very difficult environment and this was their three miles to talk to their friends, to relax, to spend time away from the problems in the village. And he had taken that away from them. So it just teaches you how you really need to understand your community and in every way, in terms of religion, once we sit down and we talk to each other and figure each other out, maybe we can understand and work together better. Sure. I was just curious, as someone who works in a library around a lot of different types of books, and I see um, much more popularity of books being written with um, an inquiry into religious faith or beliefs or practices. And I'll just you know mention a couple of names, such as Dan Brown and the same breath with Jonathan Brooks. Um, do you here on the panel see that as a positive way of moving forward conversations on faith, practices, and beliefs? I won't answer for the Catholic Church, but uh, <laughs> I will answer for Project Interfaith. Uh, the, one of the biggest issues that we come to face is the myths um, that people learn. And not that, not that those books are wrong in any way, and it is nice that people are reaching out and you're, you're reaching maybe a larger audience, because a lot of people would be more interested in reading that type of book maybe than this one. Uh, but you, at the same time, one of the biggest problems that we face is the fact that not everything is accurate. And so uh, one of, I, I, I don't think that it's bad, but it has its drawbacks. So our, I guess our goal as a community is to work toward maybe, it's great that, that we're reaching out to a larger group, a larger community, but also um, bringing more awareness to the fact that maybe some of those things are inaccurate and saying, well, this is great that you're interested in it, but let me also 
tell you, you know, what's right and what's wrong or explain it. And that comes from the people, you know, that are actually in the faith and, and know the facts. So. We've got to remind people those books are fiction. <laughs> fiction. It's an important word. As an English professor, I think books are good. <laughs> so I'm going to stop there. Can I say something? My uh, husband, uh, father, he's a deceased now, no longer with us, but when he was uh, maybe in his 40s or 30s, he used to uh, cross the Shat al Arab to Iran, since we're in Basra, so there's a small river bef be between Basra and Aquas, and he had his best friend, a Jewish guy, worked in Iran, so he would go there and he would smuggle fabric, because there's very good fabric that comes in Iran, and he will smuggle it into Iraq, you know, hide it behind uh, something in the boat or something and bring it to Iraq. So one time, he made it over there, and he's been knowing his friend for a long time. But again, on the meds, he heard that, you know, the Jewish people, on a certain holiday, they will kill a Muslim person. So it ended up that that, that holiday is gonna happen the next day. So on that night, when he made it over to Iran, he had was captured by the police. The, uh, what they call the customs, you know, immigration customs, and they took all this fabric. So he was barely made it to his friend's house, and he's gonna spend the night over there. So all night he was her hurting the sharpening of the knives. <laughs> you know, he was just sharpening the knives and making them sharper and sharper. He said, oh boy, why did I come today? I hurt the smith, I know my friend, I know how he won't do that, but it's just the devil, start working. <laughs> oh, tomorrow, you're not gonna make it until tomorrow, or tomorrow morning you're gonna be that chicken or that person. So he got up in the morning, and of course he, did, he couldn't sleep. He was just so uh, afraid, and he was I don't know, just um, couldn't sleep. So he got up in the morning. His friend came and woke him up and said, "Good morning. You have a good night's sleep. I brought you breakfast." And he said, "Are you going to feed me before you kill me?" He said, "Kill me? You what? I'm your friend. We've known each other for a long time." He said, "Well, let me tell you. I'm going to be honest with you. Why were you sharpening knives all night long?" And I was thinking, you know, because in my hometown, I heard this is what some of the Jewish people do in their, some of their holidays. He said, you know, that's not true. You're my friend, and we don't kill people. <laughs> we have, yes, we do have a holiday, but we're gonna, you know, sacrifice chickens, and we're gonna make a big meal and give it to the neighbors, and, and you know, we're gonna have all my family coming over. So he said, you were afraid for nothing, and you didn't sleep for nothing, and I won't do that. And so this is some of the myth that, you know, people hear, and, and uh, it's not right, it's not, it's false, but just be, people sometimes believe that people from certain faith, they do these kind of things, and we just hold on to that thought or hold on to that myth and, and believe in it for so long until we meet somebody maybe from that faith or for some time um, have the courage even sometimes to ask. Sometimes we just don't and we just believe this is what they do. And um, again, uh, if I can say one more thing, some people believe that I shout with my scarf and I go to sleep with it. And, or we're bald, or we have lice, we're not clean, or something, and, and we don't take it off. And that's not true, that's all false. So, of course, I shower like anybody else. I get in the tub and I, you know, nothing on, and I wash and I go. But this is, I wear it outside of my house. Or to people that they're not family, uh, they're not related to me, that's what I cover. And of course we have hair, we don't have lice, we shampoo, we wash, we, you know, we go to the salons and everything. So we're regular people like anybody else. And we can work and we can get a job and we can go to school, so the religion doesn't prevent us. A lot of people, sometimes they come to me and they said, well, how come you're still covered and you say you're still Muslim, but you work? I said, but what's wrong with working? I'm worshiping at the same time. I'm going to work and I'm earning money, but at the same time, I'm worshiping God by bringing that clean money to my family and helping my husband support my family so we don't go outside and beg or do something wrong to support our family. And they're just so surprised by, by that. So that's some of the stuff that I thought maybe I should add and say in front of everybody. Thank you. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for coming and sharing your thoughts with us tonight. That was really enlightening. And it just goes to sort of underline that no matter what we read or what we hear, um, we always need to be wary of what truth is and what fiction is, no matter how good it might be. We certainly hope that you do read people of the book and enjoy it. We'll be doing other programs. 
Um, before you leave tonight, if you want, we do have facsimile copies of the Sarajevo, Sarajevo Haggadah. And you're welcome to come down and look at that. And again, I'd like to thank all of our panelists for being here tonight. And